Hey guys, welcome to the fourth iOS game tutorial, and in this tutorial we are going to create our game loop so that whenever our plane makes contact with the pipes or the ground, it will end the game and we'll be able to see this screen and click new game. We won't add the score yet, but as you can see there's a place for the score to go, so that'll probably be in another tutorial. I'll put the link in the description for my little set of art and the SKT utils link so you guys can get that and bring it into your project if you haven't already. First thing we're going to do is add two variables here to implementation. One is game, oh sorry, bool is game over and sk sprite node game over menu. Oh hey what's up? Oh yeah, never forget the semicolons. And let's take away that pointer. Since this is a boolean, we don't really need a pointer to it. It's just true or false. Uh, next, we're just going to add a little snippet of code right here that's going to add our game over menu and uh, position it. OK, so here's our game over menu. We give it the image named game over image, which you can get in the zip uh, in the link in the description. Uh, I'm going to set hidden equal to yes, because we're going to put it on our screen, but we don't want it there until the very end. Another way you could do it is not create this until you the game is over, but I just have it there because it's not graphics intensive, especially because it's hidden. So this is just uh, fine for right now. Next we're going to update our touches began and update methods because now that we have to deal with if the game is over or not, these definitely need to change. Okay, so here's our touches began method. As you can see, it got a lot bigger. It used to just be applying the impulse, but now we totally changed it. First, we have this UI touch my touch, and basically we're saying um, any any touch is now my touch, whatever touch there is, and then we find the current position of that touch, and then we say if the game layer dot speed is greater than zero, and right now this might not make any sense, but basically game layer dot speed is greater than zero when you're playing and now we're gonna make it equal to zero if the game is over. So if the game layer speed is greater than zero we're gonna apply the impulse and make our plane fly but if it's not then we're checking to see if it is the game over and if it is we're gonna say if the current position here's a you're gonna have to pause and write down this code but basically it's just checking if the current position is within this new game rectangle. Because I could have just added a new game sprite by itself, but I just made it part of this whole image. So I'm just checking the position, and if it's within that, then it'll do this, which is, uh, it creates a scene, which is this exact scene, actually. It just makes another one, and then we do a SK transition to reveal the new scene, and then we present the scene. So it basically, it's gonna start the game over. And now we need to change this update method to check to see if we lost or not. All right, so what I did here is I made this if game over equals no, then it moves the pipes because if it's not game over, we want the pipes to be moving. And those are something that we can't control with the game layer. So we have to start them and stop them with this. But when we set the game layer to zero in the next method, it will stop our background and our ground from moving. So it'll look like everything just stopped. And then we have this little line of code right here. And basically, it's a method I found for uh, turning your sprite up and down. So if we're jumping, or if we, t we touched, and we want it to go up, it'll face up. And then when it's going down, it'll face down. So that's really nice. It takes the physics body velocity, which we don't even deal with. The physics body does it when we apply the impulse. So right below it, I'm going to add that clamp method that I have, and you guys can copy it down. All right, there we go. So now we have this clamp method, CG floats, and if the value is greater than the max, we'll return the max, or else we'll return the min, and if not, turn the value. Now that we have all that, the last thing we need is a collision detection because we have physics bodies able to hit each other and it knows it hit each other but we don't have any code activating when those things collide. Okay so I've added this method void did begin contact and then sk physics contact contact and this 
is automatically called when a physics body makes contact. And so what it does here is it says, is the game layer speed greater than zero? And it's greater than zero while the game is running. And then it does a few if checks. First, it checks to see if it's contacted with the score category. And we're not doing anything here yet, so just leave this empty. But make sure you put this if check in. And then there's an else if check, and this is if it's hit the sky category, and that's just checking if it hit the ceiling, because we've made a sky co category where it can hit the ceiling, and that won't cause the game to be over. It's just going to hit it and bounce off, just because we don't want our sprite going out of the screen. So we're going to do nothing here, but we have to have it here, or else when we contact the sky, it'll run this. Last, we have this else. What we do is we set the game layer speed equal to zero, which will stop it, BG layer speed equals zero, which will stop that, and then we remove all actions, so nothing's going to be running. So we have the player plane physics collision bit mass, the world category, and then we tell the player plane to run this action, and what it's doing is it's just, once it hits something, we want it to fall to the ground, kind of like a plane would fall, you know, nose first and all that, and it sets the speed to zero at the end. After that, we make sure the game over menu is not hidden, and then we set the Z position to be the very front of everything. And we tell our game that it's game over. So let's give this a shot. All right, guys, when I ran the game, I noticed that the game over menu didn't show up. And I did exactly what I tried to tell you guys not to forget about. In the init with size method, after you do all your game over menu little uh, coding statements right here, make sure to put this. Put uh, our HUD layer, which we have declared up in implementation right up here. We're going to put HUD layer, add child, game over menu. Because even though we did all this coding for it, it still hasn't been added to the HUD layer, which itself is a child of the self layer, which is the scene. So the reason it wasn't showing up is because it wasn't even added. But now, after we add it, you can see we fly, we fly, and then we hit something. We've got this game over. We click new game, and boom, got our game again. So there we go. That's a very simple game loop. Hope you guys learned something from this. And the next tutorial, I guess we'll start adding the score. So whenever we pass through a hoop, we gain some score. All right. Thanks for watching.